Okay, as you can see from the paint, I am taking a break from painting. <laughs> and the painting, the reason why it's kind of a struggle, is that house up there is got a lot of uh, dark wood paneling. So the first room, I sanded it down, but I didn't sand it enough. So it took like 15 layers of paint, which dripped and well, there you go. So I tried to deal with all that. Learned my lesson. Second room, we are doing a lot more sanding and it, it is going on. Uh, went ahead and put a couple layers of paint just to see how it was working. Worked beautifully. So now that we know how much sanding needs to be done on paneling, we're moving forward. And I'm sure that's information that y'all couldn't care less about. <laughs> Don't know exactly why I inserted it, except to explain the paint across in my hands, in my face. <laughs> anyway, so I'm taking a break on this. Good thing about the sanding and the painting is it definitely is a chance to put myself in kind of a meditative state. And I've been thinking about this masculine, feminine money issue. Well, I don't know how y'all are, but I love Queer Eye for the Gay Guy. I mean, Queer Eye for the Straight Guy. That show? Well, I just noticed on Netflix that they've got a new bunch of younger guys, and they've, they're doing the series again, which I love, absolutely love. Love the second guys. Uh, not quite as much as the first guys, but uh, that's because I'm a hardcore fan. But I do like the second guys a lot. And one of them was talking, and they were talking about, they were talking to a a guy from the South who was uh, kind of a self-proclaimed redneck. And he was talking to one of the gay guys, and the gay guy was married. And the straight guy said, well, are you the the woman or the man? And one of the other gay guys, and I'm sorry, I don't know their names yet because I've just watched a couple of the shows. But in the back seat, he was saying, well, that, uh, um, that, that, of course, that asking that question was a sexist question, but it is a question that is valid whenever you're talking about straight and gay guys or people trying to communicate and understand each other. So... The guy in the back seat said something that I just loved. And he said that he doesn't look at it as male or female. He looks at it as lunar and solar. Lunar being the feminine, solar being the masculine. And I love that. And the reason why I went into all of that is because I've decided to change the terminology of masculine and feminine to lunar and solar. I mean, I'm going to really try in all my conversations. Now, the reason for this is just saying the words masculine and feminine sets off a negative vibration to me. Now, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a lesson about how I do things. It, it really doesn't surprise me much that the timelines that I am on, there is such animosity in the feminine and the masculine, a lot of fear and anger at both sides. Because I have such a severe, um, there's a lot of brutality in my life. There's not been one man, not one man in my life that has not uh, done pretty terrible things to me. So, and I understand all this. There's no blame here. This was my life. I created it. I know how I came in. I know why it all occurred. No blame. I'm not angry. I'm not upset about anything. But what I am aware of is that history does shape what I create moment to moment. So I'm always looking at the divine, looking for and trying to identify the divine masculine and the divine feminine in my life. Because due to the brutality of men and the way that I was raised, especially with the religion as well, there is a lot of uh, trust issues and a lot of worthiness issues. I have very, very, very low self-esteem most of my life due to that interaction. So therefore, my history is full of very undivine masculine and undivine feminine. So this is a, this is a primary, primary thing in my life. And I know that due to my history, 
that to get to timelines where there is divine masculine and feminine is very is is definitely one of my challenges and it's very important these energies are very very strong that and the energies of money okay so when i do a video and let's say there's a strong response like on my divine masculine vi videos and there's been very strong and um i know i'm loved by all you guys but I'm going to say this because this is the energy that is behind it. When I feel very strong attacks in on those videos, how I do is I don't look at the person that is talking to me. I don't uh, go, oh, okay, well, I'm going to get defensive and angry because this guy is being extremely defensive and not listening to what I'm saying. No, 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 that's not what I do. What I do is I say I had to put out this video what timeline am I, am I on? Okay, what kind of response did I get back? On most of them that I've done so far, I would say there's about a 50%, 50%. 50% of guys that were, um, and then of course there were the back and forths. Uh, but it's been pretty much an even split between guys that are listening going, yes, I can see, or this is new. I hadn't noticed that before. This is something that I need to work on and being open and interested in how I perceived things around me and perhaps Stephanie perceived things around me and the ones that immediately said, well, it's not my fault. I'm not that kind of guy. It's not that bad or it's women's fault. They're the ones that raised us, the men. Um, therefore, it's the, it's the women's fault. Okay. I do not look at those individual men that were responding, or women for that matter, that responded to those videos and said, okay, that person I think this about, and this person I think that about. No, that's not what I do. What I'm looking for is knowing that because of my past, um, the violence in my life that has created my outlook in life, then that outlook is what draws me to a certain timeline with a certain collective consciousness. So when I put out those videos and I get that response of about a 50-50 with some crossover, that for me is a huge improvement compared to if I would have done, say, the same kind of video a year ago. It would have been probably easily 75 to 80 percent men going, it's not my fault, and then pretty much shutting down, getting angry and defensive and fighting back and no listening at all. So I feel like this is a big improvement. But what I'm looking for is I'm looking for the response so I know what kind of collective I'm with. Because you can, you can listen to my video and respond however you like. But more than likely, right after that, because as I've told you, we move to million to two billion timelines per second okay as we move along now the majority of the people based on the fact that they're in amnesia and they're not very good at creating most of us jump around within this range back and forth back and forth and there's it's the same group of timelines that we vacillate beyond or within so you might be in a timeline where, let's say, I visualize or Stephanie says, we're having this experience. Or I have a, a video where I say, this has been my experience. Whereas you could be listening to my video, having come to my video from different timelines, where you haven't experienced that at all. Okay? So that is where that comeback of, well, that's not what I see, comes from frequently. But I want y'all to understand that in doing these videos, I'm sharing my path. I'm sharing my remembering in order to help you trigger your remembering so that you can create better to go to the timelines that you want to, to go to. But I'm doing the same thing. So if you come to me and you say a comment below on my, my video and you say, well, that's not how I see ma masculine. 
then I'm going to seriously say, oh, I'm glad to hear that. I'm really, really glad to hear that. And I mean it. But your timeline and where you have experienced in my timeline, where I have experienced are more than likely completely different. So I am not going to try to force you to see my timelines, especially since my timelines are timelines that I wish to get away from because of my history. So I am going to listen to your timelines where you say, I don't see that and smile to myself. I'm not going to argue with you about it because we were on different timelines. We were experiencing different things. Think Mandela effect. Okay. What I am going to smile about is that you're saying, no, I see this or I've experienced this reminds me that there are collective consciousnesses out there that I can get to timelines that I can switch to tweet to walk over to where it's not as bad as what I have experienced in my past. So <clears throat> if y'all could just keep that in mind when you're dealing with other people, as they share their experience, there is no need to convince them that your way is right. This is a part of the non-judgment and understanding timelines, understanding uh, our creative paths, so to speak, that our creative paths, even if you're living with somebody, are very, very different. Not only do you have a different perspective based on who you are, but you will have jumped to different timelines and different aspects of that person that you're living with. So when you have a conversation with them, your remembering of them, like the Mandela effect, we, might be very, very different. When you understand that, communicating with somebody and sharing your perspective, your history, your goals for tomorrow, are, are they're done a lot differently. And there's far less anima animosity. So as I do my video and I reach out, which I have done a couple of masculine vid videos, which in my opinion, the 50%, which was much better than I know it would have been a year ago, but it's far, far off from where I want to go. Okay. So given that this is my creative story, this is my perspective, and it's my control to get to the timelines that I want, I'm not going to do that by doing a video and say, okay, guys, this is everything in my past that I see you do wrong. Now I want you all to change it. That is not my intent at all. For everyone that is on the timelines and has been on the timelines that I have seen undivine masculine and undivine feminine, I want that aspect of you and them to stay and play exactly where they are. It's none of my business. Uh, if that is what, clearly, that is what that aspect of you or they have decided to do in their creative game of this life. And everybody has every right to do so. What I'm looking at is not to try to get you to change your mind. I would like the response to you from you so I can see where I am in the collective, not to change you or that aspect of you that's in that 50% mark, but I'm looking to tweak myself over to a collective consciousness that is 100% divine and 100% divine masculine and 100% divine feminine. That is my goal. Now, from my perspective, given the fact that every single man has been very undivine, very, very, very violently undivine, and the response in kind has been very, very undivine feminine in my life, I am in a situation where I don't know what divine and feminine and masculine look like. I could not find them vibrationally after dying until after the first. After the first, the New Year's Eve event, now I can recognize it. The reason why I can recognize pure divine is from being dead, from my NDE. But there was nothing like it, so I came back, and a lot of that stuff from, from really being out there on the other side, I come back to the planet and there's nothing even remotely like it here. So that's what cost me a couple, two, three years trying to figure out uh, and, and what I thought was, well, that's there, this is here, that's heaven, this is hell. 
I've just got to do my time until I can get back home. Now, the truth of the matter is that it took me a while to figure out, remember, and understand that I can tweak my way towards heaven while here in the physical body. Okay. And that's what I'm doing. So, um, from that perspective, now whenever it comes to Divine Masculine and Divine Feminine, which we will now call Lunar and Solar Energies, then due to my past, just the word Masculine and Feminine has a lot of negative vibrations around it. Now that is for me. That is my perception based on my traumatic past. Therefore, in order to... At first, I was trying to use divine masculine and divine feminine in those words, but it, it really is not working. So I, I was, I had really made a call out, well, what can I do to get away from these words and still communicate to myself and in the videos, this divine masculine and feminine. And here in comes queer eye for the straight guy. And this beautiful statement of him using lunar and solar which just clicked with me. It resonated beautifully. So I can totally visualize divine masculine and divine feminine by using those terms, solar energy and lunar energy, where there is nothing but positive energies around those two, that division of energies that is the masculine and the feminine. Okay? So that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be using the term solar and lunar. Now, back to my masculine and uh, undivine masculine videos. And this isn't true just with this. This is in a lot of topics. That it is not my goal to get you to change your mind. My goal is to have this interaction so that I can see where I am, what timelines I'm on. The easy way of doing it, of course, is in, in things like... Um, are there people starving on the planet? Are there children that don't have enough food? Okay, that's easy to look at. I can go out in the news. I can assess quickly um, if there are children on the planet that are homeless and have no food or have inadequate housing and have no food, at which point I immediately say, this isn't what I prefer. What I prefer is there to be more or less uh, starving children. So I'm going to visualize that a little bit better tomorrow. Now, just that visualizing that, that there are more children fed today than there were yesterday, that is one of my ways, many, many ways, of being a little bit happier now than I was a second ago. Because I can, I can picture this. Now, on an energetic level, when it comes to something as intense as the masculine and the feminine, Okay, let's back this up for a second. The when, when we when the creator came out, now the original creator came out with this energy of of oneness because the creator that started this is in oneness as all beings are outside of this duality game and decided to split things in half. The first split that was done was what you would consider light and dark. Okay? Because on the other side, the creator, light and dark are together as one. Um, yeah. The next split that was done was into this division of the energy that, that we have been calling divine feminine and divine masculine, which will now be solar and lunar. So it was a, the second split that happened. So it is very, very encompassing everything has been split in these two ways energetically. Now, in a physical form, whenever a human comes down, it is very obvious because you choose a female body or a male body. But energetically, there is much more complexity than that. There is both feminine, lunar, and solar energies within each of us. And ultimately, the goal as we head towards oneness is to incorporate both the lunar and the solar within ourselves and balance them like you see the yin-yang symbol. 
given the fact of my traumatic history, I have to elevate my solar and lunar within myself and I must balance them. Now, when I do that within myself and I have a video, the response will show me how far along I am because it must come from within first to get to the collective consciousness that is more divine solar and lunar and more balanced. If I do a video and I have a negative response or it is an undivine feminine and undivine masculine response, it is because within me they are not. Uh, it is mirroring where I am as far as divine and undivine energies. So it is not the commenter. It's not the one that watches my videos. It's not the people that are talking to me on the street in, in town every day. It's not my ex Steve's fault. They are not in the wrong that nobody is doing things inappropriately. Like I've said, no reason to judge, no reason to blame. It is simply my way of seeing where energetically I stand. Because unless my solar, solar and lunar are vibrationally raised to a more divine level, and unless they are balanced, I cannot take myself to a collective consciousness where those things are occurring in the real. Okay? I won't see men and women acting in divine ways unless I am first raising my vibrations and balancing them. Okay, does that make sense? Now, I do that with a lot of areas, all areas, really. But because first there was light and dark, and then there was male and female, lunar and solar, solar split, those are very, very important uh, divisions. And everything else came under those. Light and dark is fairly easy for me to deal with. That is uh, uh, very easy for me to see that, that they are one. It's very easy for those to be balanced for me. That's already a done deal. It was, it was pretty easy to... Uh, I think it was easy before I died. But after I died, it was exceptionally easy. The next big split was the lunar-solar split which, of course, I've had much, much difficulty with. So as I work on not only raising my vibrations to a more uh, divine lunar area as a woman, I must also incorporate the divine solar into me and balance them. And I'm trying to balance them as I raise, so I don't have to do the, the, the balancing later. I'm trying to raise the vibrations equally and balance them equally. And uh, so basically this whole video is to explain to you how I look at things. The uh, way, way, way back, go back in the way back machine, back when the lady from New Orleans um, trashed me about losing my nursing license. I got very, very upset. And the reason I got upset was not because of her. I got upset, and I think I've said this before, I got upset because, again, it was a mirror to me. Her being that angry and uh, almost vindictive and almost hateful to me mirrored how I looked at that situation. That's what was upsetting that I thought that I had already dealt with that issue and I thought it was no big deal. And here, clearly, this interaction with her showed that I was not okay with it. Very, very quickly, I did deal with it. It did not take long. But that is the way that you are going to find out your next step to 5D. And your whole life is going to be full of those tweaks, those noticing things. If you are not centered and if you aren't listening and if you aren't watching those people and experiences around you, then you're missing out on major opportunities for you to learn what you need to do to raise your vibration to get closer to 5D. Now, for anybody who's just staying and playing in 4D, 
pay no attention to any of this. This is for people who are trying to increase their vibration to go to the collective consciousness where Gaia is already waiting. There are all kinds of beings waiting for us to come and play. Okay, that's what I am doing. And this is how I do it. So every interaction that you have, good or bad, is a mirror of vibrationally where you are because your vibration takes you to the collective consciousness that matches, okay? So if the collective consciousness around you is not what you prefer, then the trick is to start tweaking to get to the one that you do prefer. You're not going to make this major jump and go, okay, I don't like all of this stuff. Now I want to go to 5D. No, 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 it doesn't work that way. You have to change your vibration to get to that timeline. You can't just say, okay, I'm just going to go there. No, it doesn't work like that. You have to vibrate appropriately to get in or you can't get in. Okay? So you, the way you do that is every experience around you, good or bad, you use that to correct your vibration to get to a higher frequency to get to 5D. Okay? So... The other night, whenever I found out, and I don't know, it's one of those oh, Facebook moments where you're going, I cannot believe that I didn't realize this. When I realized that I was just connecting with low solar uh, lunar aspect of money, because in in physical form, you can actually have a physical form that is female, a physical form that's male, and then have both energies within that physical body. When it comes to major energy flows like money, the energy of money, there isn't a physical form. So it is an energetic form. As an energetic form, there will always be a yin-yang uh, solar and lunar aspect of that kind of energy, like wind, like uh, any of the elementals really. But any of the major energies, there, of course, would be this dualistic split between the lunar and the solar. But it did not occur to me at all. So to find out that I'd been connecting and had done well in connecting with the vibration of money that was lunar, but totally had no, have no even understanding, let alone connection with the lunar aspect of money, was mind-boggling to me and explained so much of my life. Now, I had this conversation with Stephanie, and she went, uh, yeah. So she spent yesterday as well reaching out to that other dualistic side, that solar aspect of money. And after both of us spending a couple days reaching out, meditating, and looking for that energy, both of us have connected with the solar aspect of money which is very, very exciting. Now, how she sees it is she sees them like uh, ballroom dancing and working with each other in a flow, in a give and take type thing, which I think is a beautiful way of seeing it. I have connected with the lunar aspect of money and the solar aspect of money, but I have not been able to bring them together yet. But I will. I will over time. But I do think that this is very, very important whenever it comes to uh, a lot of the beings out there, a lot of light workers, a lot of, of uh, regular people have had trouble with money issues. Not all of us. There's some really, really great uh, manifestors of money and abundance out there, in, especially in this group. But the far the majority is, is something different altogether. So this understanding that the energy of money was nabbed and it was split as well into lunar and solar. And in order to really reap the benefits of abundance, especially through money per se, takes a connection with both the lunar and the solar and a balance of the two in order to raise the vibrations up so that that money can come in and out, in and out, in and out. Does that make sense? All right. Well, this has been kind of a long video, not very focused on anything in particular, 
But I just wanted to touch base here and just go over those few items as I um, kind of share with you how I'm working with that energy of money. And as I find out different things and as I incorporate them, then, uh, then I will, of course, be sharing it with you. Now, the interesting thing is both Stephanie and I are describing uh, lunar, the, the lunar aspect of money, we see her as very, um, like, bubbles and butterfly, gypsy-esque, 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 gypsy -esque, like um, dancing and, and twirling and very much green. Green is definitely uh, the color of money that both of us see that. And then for the for the lunar aspect, we see him as kind of a, not a, a snobby suit guy in a suit, but just very put together and very stable and very, with just that hint of a smile. Both of us described very, very similar things. And of course, Stephanie put them together in a ballroom dance type situation or even as a ba ballet dance situation, which I thought was just beautifully put. And I'm going to incorporate this in order to bring those energies together as one and to balance them as I incorporate them into my life. Okay. All right. I guess I'll cut it off there. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. I guess that's it. Uh, I love you guys so much. Huge hugs. And I'll talk to you later. Bye now.